Hey, it's Joe Glides from Automator, and we're going to cover what we automated this week without a hotkey. It was kind of a light week. Uh, a couple of the guys were off a lot of it. Use Oh, let me first jump up my DPI. After that, I know there's not much on the screen, so you can't tell. Now I'm going to launch something modified files. See what comes up. I'm going to guess 40-ish. Oh, yeah, 30. Okay. This is a radiologist. Uh, Isaias was doing some work. Doing some really complicated regular expression pattern matching, and he, he grabs text because he speaks a lot of what he um, he uses, and he then has key words he mentions, and we monitor the text that gets dumped, and then we're actually in, um, I can't think of the name right now of the program, we are programmatically controlling where it goes in that program, which is really cool, and reorganizing the text for him. I think even using like rich text formatting, which is really cool because you wouldn't expect you could do that in this tool. So it's really cool. Payroll summary. We, uh, one of our clients, every week they do their payroll stuff. And they realized also in the historical stuff, because now we're doing new stuff for them, which made it simpler, but their older stuff wasn't the same. So they had us go back and apply what we did. Also, they didn't have a lot of the, the rules built into their Excel files. Well, tab limited text files. So we, um, we had to adapt our code a bit to, to summarize that, but now they have it all consistent. And I, I meant to ask him, but I, we could tell it saved them hours and hours of work. So one time job um, saved them a bunch of time and, and we made sure it's correct. So that's cool. It's tool, oh, is ASAP to his toolkit? Oh, I told him there was a, I forget what I said. There was a, oh yeah, the library where it was, this folder, there was no script object. So he probably um, went in and fixed that. That's his toolkit, which is really cool because you can run both V1 and V2 code, really short little scripts to just play with. It's very cool. Age, oh, I was working. So if you didn't see my announcement the other day, Claude, um, the new model, Sonnet, is really, really good at actually providing working V2 code, auto hotkey V2 code. So um, AI has been around for a while now in, in, in assisting, but it was never offering up valid V2 code to start. And even with a lot of nudging, it took a lot of work. Now, as I explained it to Isaias, I said, in V in, in the earlier versions using ChatGPT and other tools, um, you could get code, but it would take someone who actually knows AutoHotKey to get it working because you had to spot what was wrong with it. Now, not only does it render valid working code but it's so good that the tweaks you make are very usually very minor and it's good to go i even took a gui and said hey you know create a gui maybe this age one had it where i said uh, let's go ahead and actually i think i set it up by no edit notepad what is going on that's weird that should not be there so studio of course open the wrong version of studio this is the v1 version of studio um Yeah, Y plus 10, Y plus 10. So it, it first created one, um, and then there's the Y and YP. So it gave me a static version where these coordinates were hard-coded in their locations. And it, and it worked flawlessly. So on the very first request, it gave me working code. And then I said, hey, you know what? I don't like the fact that they're hard-coded because sometimes we'll add new stuff to it. And when you add stuff or move stuff around, those hard-coded numbers just bite you in the ass. There's no no better way to say it. Uh, it. It's one of the things we always stay away from. It's why we don't ever encourage people to use the GUI creators, because there's GUI creators, but they give you those static things. And now I gave this information to ChatGPT and said, hey, redo this where these things are relative based on the other things. And it nailed it. It converted it. And I'm, I'm sure there's still some more tweaks we would do, but I was really happy to see that, like, Hey, now we could possibly encourage someone to use a GUI creator tool because you could have uh, an AI tool convert it to a relative position tool, which is really cool. So there's that. Well, I actually was working with their API. Oh, this is not in there, but it, it's somewhere in here. The Claude Play. Um, there, oh, yeah, here yeah, we are in our APIs. So we have a class mod object for working with the ChatGPT API, and they keep updating their API, not just updating, but really changing it where it breaks our stuff. And it's getting kind of annoying because we've never had an API change so drastically um, where it, it's really taken us you know, time to go back and update it. Uh, and that's not a norm in APIs by, by far, very, very rare. So 
Now that Claude, and I do think ChatGPT, uh, I would bet you in the next couple weeks or a month or something's going to release a new model that, and, and it probably can handle auto hotkey. We'll see with the V2. But um, even if it didn't, I'm wondering if the Claude API is more stable and doesn't change as much. And maybe we should switch to some degree to using that because from from all accounts, it's it's right now above where ChatGPT uh, 4.0 is. Now, again, I think it's going to constantly be nudging each other up, right? Which is what they've been doing. But I'm really excited about that. And I was using Claude to create the com object for doing the API calls. Not the com object, but for creating the API calls um, for using their API. It was really cool. So I was having it because it's been a while since actually pro, especially in V2. I wasn't too familiar in doing the API calls in V2 and I wanted to do it in V2. So I was having it assist me and it was, you know, it was great. It, it offered, it actually mentioned a json library which didn't exist so i did have to tell it that and then it wrote one which had some problems and i'm like i don't really care about that at the moment but very very cool really excited go play with claude um if you want to get some good valid v2 code also i've read that their vision model in claude is also really really good so maybe you give that a try we um during last week oh so isaias was updating some of the tests okay i'm sorry i was just looking at that one that's for the um chat gpt open ai that's our model i was just referring to this bar chart example so we did a video on it and during the after we recorded the video because we were showing bar charts and i said to zayas after i'm like hey wouldn't it be kind of cool if we could show instead of just the number show the percents and we have a video on this bar chart saying so go check that out or you can get the download now i don't know if the video's been released but it's um it's a really cool great way to build simple bar charts but um right after we recorded the video i had zayas add a new uh parameter to the function in class to say, hey, what if we if we pass a P, I think it makes it percents. Otherwise, maybe a V makes it a value. So we're showing the data differently. Pretty cool. Um, trigger. Now, this one, Irfan, I don't want to share it yet, but we're, it's really cool. We're developing a class that will allow you to easily choose, say, hey, I want to have a trigger for this script I'm writing. And I want it to be, you know, in the system tray icon. I want to have it, uh, that list of menus that pops up. And I want to have a preference center. And I want to let people choose whether they want a hot key, a hot string, or a mouse click. Um, that you choose one of those. And then you can also make it context sensitive, which is really cool. So we're going to provide um, ourselves and you guys with a script that will make it very easy to add this to your code. Because... It's easy for us that program an auto hotkey to go and change a hotkey or add a hot string as a trigger, right? That's a no-brainer. However, when you go to share your tools with other people, they have no idea how to change the code. If they're like, oh, I hate that hotkey. I wish it was something else. Like They'd have to understand auto hotkey to go change that. Well, of course, in our tools, we try to let people select their hotkey because it's one of the very powerful things about auto hotkey, right? Is that you get to choose your hotkey or hot string or whatever you're doing. Uh, so you, it's much easier to remember, which is it's it's just really phenomenal. In some tools... I haven't seen it in like Excel and Word, but like Zoom lets you do it, even though they they screw it up some. But you you know some tools nowadays let you choose your hotkey for you. They have one by default, but then you can change it. And I think hopefully more and more tools start doing that because it's such a lifesaver when you can make it something that makes sense to you. So this class, um, maybe next week. Irfan will be back next week. Last week he was off most most of the week, so he'll be back on that. Um, auto wants to script. So we use Mailgun. We use their API for distributing our newsletter and all of the, when you go to get a download, it, um, it will trigger the email through their SMTP servers. We have a suppression list also. So if you unsubscribe and if you unsubscribe, then you go to get a download, you can't get the link to the download because you've unsubscribed. So I get a lot of emails about that. Like I, I, I paid a dollar for this download damn it where is it I, i'm oh, exaggerating here but people do say i i you know i paid for this thing and i haven't gotten the email and i'll look and they have unsubscribed and i'm like yeah i can't legally email you if you're unsubscribed so anyway um we also noticed every time i would send the newsletter um, and i could probably pull this up if you guys are interested the benchmarks i was sending and i was getting still a lot of um bounces every time i would send and suppressions of those that were actually not subscribe but but Mailgun keeps track of the, of the suppressions. If you've unsubscribed or bounced, um, it's supposed to automatically not send to you. And sometimes it would do that, and then sometimes it, it for whatever reason, it wasn't doing it. And so I told Isaiah, hey, I, I don't want to, because every time we do that, we get put on the um, spam list from, it's really complicated, but it makes our delivery really hard. So 
Isaiah, we worked, uh, spent a couple hours cleaning up that list where now it auto checks it and twice a week I go and check, hey, if someone has bounced in the last week, and, I, and it, it has to be a permanent bounce because there's different levels of bounces. Sometimes your mailbox is full and it's not really a true bounce. You just can't just deliver it. So we don't remove people from that. But if it was a true hard bounce, now we go and change your subscription to be unsubscribed or bounced, or I forget if it's just one or the other. But when I go pull that next newsletter, you're not; those people aren't included in it. So it's really cleaned up our deliverability, uh, which is really cool because I think we'll be far less likely to show up as um, and, and get put on spam list, which happens uh, most weeks. We have roughly 6,000 email addresses that we send to every week. And um, now, before we were having like 350, 400 bounces and suppressions and now it's down to a trickle like eight or 20 or something like it's very small at least last time i looked um this is the script we're looking at right now now this is where i said isaiah was working on it and he he had made it where if i either control or no it was alt that's what it was so let me go up to um let's see here this bar chart example if i hold down alt and click it this should edit it pop open the editor Oh, and I see... Oh, it tried to run it. No, no, no. That's the site. That's the um, studio. I need to, now that I'm I'm working in V2 more, I need to switch. So this is the V1 version of studio. Um, however, this, and I can tell by the color of the background, this is the V2 version. And so I need to make it so this is the default one. So now that I'm working with V2 code, it can handle it. So anyway, yeah, so now I remember because Isaiah said something about if you want to select multiple, the controls used for that, and the, that's why we had to switch it to the alt. Uh, so can we test? This one was really cool. Let me see. Now that's going to, well, it'll it'll have the same area again. Yeah, that's fine. This is really cool. Um, and I'll try to remember at some point to make this code available um, as a download. But what we did, let me let me go ahead and, Oh, I can't launch it from here. Let me open the folder. Close this. Ironically, I should use the other hotkey, I guess. Open the other version of Studio. And if Studio, this version had been opened, it would have defaulted to that. But um, I think it was this one. Oh. Oh, it is. Okay. So I'm going to run this. Now, if I hold down, this is an edit. These are two edit fields in auto, an auto hotkey GUI. But if I hold down control and scroll in, notice the, the font is getting bigger and less. Now, you go try that on one of your GUIs, and I can do it on this one, right? So I asked Irfan to, to rate, create a class and demonstrate how it's one functionality. If I'm in Studio and I do this, Studio's not reacting all of a sudden. There we go. That's funny. I swear it does it all the time. Let me, let me switch over to Site. Oh, interesting. Oh, so I think I know the problem. Let me exit out of that script. I'm going to have to tell Irfan. Well, I can't get it to. So let me use my um, task manager script, and I'm going to go kill that GUI test. What's happening is that, that control scroll in and out is global and getting absorbing. It's using that zoom in and out functionality. So I need to find the GUI. It is annoying that it takes a while, but um, what? there we go. So one of these, here we go. So I'm going to kill that one. And process. And if that ended, there we go. Now when I hold down control and scroll, the problem was it's like a global hotkey. And uh, even though I didn't have that other GUI highlighted, so obviously we need a little more work on that. Um, it, uh, it was absorbing it. So yeah, I need to work on that. Let them know that that can't be. It's got to be... Um, a context sensitive hotkey to only apply when you're on that window. And I think Isaiah's mentioned that to me when we were doing some stuff. So let me get back to the modified files. This voice access, um, we released the video, uh, I think last week, if I remember right, or the, at least the downloads available. That's how you can, and now we're still doing updates to it, right? Because I think there's a lot of power here. The, um, you can once you get it into command mode, it's pretty cool because you can bind it to say, "Hey, when I say this exact thing, go do that." Right now, you can have it also interact with your window and have it present numbers to you and tell it which one you want it to click if there's multiple and stuff. 
Personally, I wouldn't use it for that. I don't. I don't care for that. But I, I really love to be able to say, "Hey, I wanted to do something." Um, like I could. I can say if I was in Zoom, I can say "computer share screen" or "share window," and it will share. It will trigger a script I wrote to go. It sends a hotkey that it uses that. So very cool. Um, we, we did think up a new way to actually better stay in command mode, for lack of a way to explain it, and it'll make sense when I show a video on it. But it's uh, their interface is horrible, and so we're trying to create a way that will make it a little easier to use the tool. So um, that'll be updated here maybe next week, hopefully, or fan will get to that as well. So all these are also, uh, I'm not sure why the other one files got updated, but that's that. And Urfian, this weekly hero content. I guess he made some. There's still some tweaks that needs to happen, and at some point, I'll, I'll, I promise I'll, I'll make a video on sharing that. But it uh, it helps get the summary of a video updated into the use AI to write a summary of the video with timestamps, and then we go update our web page, and then it also writes it to another file where I can share it into our Telegram group uh, with, with what people are doing. So hope you enjoyed that. Um, oh, and as I looks like he's starting to work. So. Good time to stop. Have a great day. If you like that video, please like like the video. It really helps us out. Have a great day. Cheers.